wanted to kick things off with a heartwarming story tonight. As a woman, it's always nice to see a father spending real quality time with their daughter, especially when they are such a busy career man. Kim Jong-un, dictator and family man, brought his daughter and wife to the military parade, which featured more intercontinental ballistic missiles than ever before. Believed to be called Jue, maybe nine or ten years old, this is the fifth public event for Kim's daughter since November, the only one of his children to be shown in public, fueling speculation he may be grooming her for succession. At elementary school age, she already outranks a room full of senior military officers. Kim Jong-un had a daughter. And uh, judging from this photo, it looks like he's got another bun in the oven. <laughs> yes, this girl is speculated to become Kim's successor. Who would have ever thought that North Korea would have a female leader before America? <laughs> I'm so sick of these Nepo babies. First we have Lily Rose Depp and then Willow Smith and now this girl. Whatever happened to becoming a nuke-wielding tyrant on merit? <laughs> you know how many girls are out there working hard, learning how to fire missiles and starve an entire population who will never have an opportunity to lead a regime? <laughs> also, to all the men out there who think fedoras are cute, I want you to know that this is what you look like. <laughs> Good look, especially when you're shaped like a giant Cabbage Patch Kid. <laughs> Let's move on to the man who invented Cabbage Patch Kids, George Santos. <laughs> Earlier this week, he was roasted at the State of the Union by Utah Senator and Silver Fox Mitt Romney. <laughs> and apparently, Georgie didn't appreciate it. Meanwhile, Santos is firing back at Senator Mitt Romney after they clashed at the State of the Union. Romney said Santos should be embarrassed and should have sat in the back and stayed quiet. It's not the first time in history that I've been told to shut up and go to the back of the room, especially by people who come from a privileged background. And I think it's reprehensible that the senator would say such a thing to me in the demeaning way he said it wasn't very Mormon of him. That's what I can tell you. people coming from a privileged background when you dress like young Sheldon. <laughs> You're saying that wasn't very Mormon? Mitt Romney is so Mormon that whatever he does is the Mormon thing to do. <laughs> he is the king of the Mormons. All Mormons are mad at you right now, and as a Jewish person, I'm gonna take a, le take a leap of faith and speak on behalf of all Jews and say, we're mad at you too. <laughs> Even the Dalai Lama is like, oh, this mother <laughs> I like how he says it's not the first time he's been told to go to the back of the room. It sounded like he was about to say, African Americans like me were told to go to the back for years, but we said no. At the same time, though, George Santos is an absolute bitch, and I love it. I'm gonna miss him. I'm gonna miss him when he's in prison in two months. Let's move on to the latest way that dumb people are spending their lives. People will do just about anything for clicks on social media, but this is really stupid. Jumping from the highest point possible and intentionally landing in the water with a belly flop. It's a stunt so terrifying. Oh! They're calling it death diving. Oh! It's extreme belly flopping and ouch, does it hurt. Oh! The higher the jump, the more the clicks. This guy is jumping off a roof into a pool, belly first. This video alone has nearly 44 million views. Watch as she throws herself off of a platform 81 feet in the air. Experts say definitely don't do it. There's potential for a lot of injuries. They could crack a rib, their, their internal organs can separate. This trend was brought to you by White Claw. The preferred drink for white people who want to do stupid shit. 
and by the way, I don't want to nitpick the way people are trying to kill themselves, but it's not really a belly flop unless you spread your arms out like this. I see you guys tucking in at the last second. Do you want to separate your internal organs or don't you? <laughs> Experts say, definitely don't do it. Yeah, no shit, Sherlock. <laughs> and by the way, you guys don't have to push things this far to go viral. You can just ski down a mountain topless like I do. <laughs> that gets plenty of clicks. On the other hand, if all the young, hot, blonde women want to belly flop to their deaths, have fun, because it's less competition for me. <laughs> And finally, let's move on to our big international story for the week, the impending Cold War between Joe Biden and Xi Xi and China. The massive recovery effort now underway. Unmanned underwater vehicles seeking out wreckage from the balloon's huge technology bay, the size of three buses. Those vehicles also searching for possible explosives. A senior U.S. official tells me the balloon had a self-destruct capability. As the U.S. collects debris and with it information, China today declaring the airship does not belong to the United States, but to China. The Biden administration making it clear they're not getting it back. F you, China. <laughs> You sent the balloon over here to spy on us. We found it, and now it's ours. <laughs> you don't get to demand that we return it, just like the guy who attacked Nancy Pelosi's husband doesn't get his hammer back. <laughs> and I don't know about you guys, but I'm not scared about the supposed explosive self-destructing capability on a balloon. All balloons have a self-destructing capability. <laughs> it's called deflating. <laughs> Also, it doesn't belong to us. I'm mean, sorry, China, but that's confusing, okay? Usually when you release things, it's for the entire world to enjoy, like COVID. <laughs> for more on the balloon cleanup, we go now to Michael Costa at the scene of the wreckage. Michael, what's going on? What's going on? Michael. Chelsea, I'm here in the debris field, which is seven miles wide, and it just keeps expanding. One thing experts have learned during this cleanup is that water moves. So how is the recovery going? Not great, you know. It's hard to distinguish the spy balloon debris from uh, debris like this that just seems to always be in the ocean. It's sad, but there's absolutely nothing we can do about it. Well, is there any way that we would ever have to give any piece of the balloon back to China? How dare you, Chelsea? Okay, America has full rights to the balloon under the historic doctrine of finders keepers, which, <laughs> of course, was later amended to include losers weepers. <laughs> However, under UN law, if America fails to declare no backsies, China can call dibs, provided that before they launch the balloon, they licked it. <laughs> Okay, well, thank you for your legal expertise, Michael. One last question. How much longer will the recovery take? It might be a while. I mean, I mean the search is being hampered by all the TikTokers who are death diving into this debris field. And <laughs> the Navy is doing... God damn it. Come on, guys. I'm doing a report. You know what really pisses me off, Chelsea? Is that they're not even belly flopping. They're tucking in at the last second. That's what I was saying! I, I, I know! It, it's like they don't even want to separate their internal organs. <laughs> God damn it! Oh my God. Look what I found. I, I think I found a piece of the balloon. <laughs> hey, Navy guys, is this something? Be careful, Michael. That might be the self-destructing part of the balloon they were talking about. The self-destructing part of the... What? I... Well, I'm sure he'll be okay. Michael Costa, everyone.